And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at number five, which incidentally is the last time you'll see one of these numbered in the yellow Tales and Games stories. From now on, they're still quote unquote numbered, but the numbers won't be on them. And this one here is Little Red Riding Hood. Now this is a game, now what's interesting about Little Red Riding Hood, each of these are games that are kind of for kids and families, um, but adults can play them too. Some of the games are really good, solid games. Uh, based on popular fairy tales, and this one, one of the most popular fairy tales of all time, Little Red Riding Hood. This one has two games in it. I mean, they're kind of the same, but one of them is a cooperative game, everyone working together, and another one is All Verse One, where one person is playing the big bad wolf, and everyone else is playing uh, the people who are helping Little Red Riding Hood, like the hunter and all that stuff. Here, I'll show you how it's played, and we'll come back for my opinions. In the cooperative version of the game, players are trying to get Little Red Riding Hood all the way down this path and to find Grandmother's house, which is randomly put down on one of these four tiles. When Little Red Riding Hood gets here, she can try to sneak through here if possible, but if the wolf lands on her at all, then everybody loses. You can start Little Red Riding Hood on the hard spot, or you can give her the two-space head start. That's the easy spot. It is up to you. Now, there's a deck of cards, and the players have a card that shows them all the cards in that deck. And one of these is revealed face up. If there's ever a flower, we're going to take one of these picnic basket tokens and place it there. And then I can decide to stop gathering or to continue on. If you continue on, you draw a card. We look at the number at the top of this card. If this number is equal to or greater than the number of cards already on the track, then you're fine. So this is two. There's only one card here. I'm fine. There's two flowers. So I'm going to put two flower tokens on that. If the next player's turn, maybe they'll draw another card. This is five. Again, there's not five cards. There's only two. So I could put this one here and put another token on it. Here I draw a three. A three is totally legitimate because there's three here. I would take this and put a flower token on it. The next time we draw a five. And again, totally because there's only four cards here. The next card we draw is a four. And here you would bust when you bust because there's five cards there and there's only a four. In fact, players can use these tokens. You could put like this number here, five, just to show players what the number is that you, you have to be equal to or higher. So when you bust, all the cards are discarded. All these tokens are placed onto this basket here. Um, this basket here is just a way to show which, which uh, tiles have been discarded. When all the tiles are gone from this pile, you take all the tiles back and put them on the table. And then the wolf moves forward one. Now, if you decide to stop, let's say I had decided to stop here rather than go, I would flip over all these tokens. And flowers are good. Pebbles are bad. There's three pebbles, but three flowers. So that means we would move three. The wolf also moves one. The wolf moves whether you go forward or whether you stop. When that happens, then all these cards are discarded. Whenever cards are discarded, you will then turn over the next card, and that's the start card of the next round. Ooh. Uh, one, but it has three flowers on it. Now, there are some special cards in the deck. There's the wolf, which is bad because, well, zero. So he's always going to cause uh, everything to fail. And there's Red Riding Hood. When this card is turned over, you instantly turn all these face up and move that many equal to the flowers. And then you can keep going. So she gives you a bonus movement. And there's an owl. When you turn an owl face up, you can look at the bottom card of the deck to see what that card might be. When you run out of cards, you shuffle them back together and put them in. Once Red Riding Hood gets down here, you can start turning these over as you land on them. If you land on Grandmother's house before the wolf does, then you win. And there's ways to get points depending on how far the wolf got. You also have a tub of butter and a pie. You can eat both of these over the course of the game to move two extra spaces. One for each one that you eat, but you get more points if you don't use them. Now that's the basic game. In the advanced game, one player plays the wolf card. And when that happens, each player is going to, each of the good players is going to have a special ability that they can use over the course of the game. When they use these special abilities, they are flipped over and given to the wolf. And then the wolf player has a special ability, which when they use, they give back to the, the, the other person. So for example, the goat here, when the wolf uses it, will get rid of a flower. 
And so there's different special abilities that players have. But instead of the card being randomly drawn from a pile, the wolf is going to be picking the card that is played. And so players are trying to outthink the wolf and see how far they want to move. There's also a trap card, which is substituted in a deck instead of the owl card. And when this card is revealed, the wolf actually goes back one spot. So the wolf is trying to get this one in there uh, when players maybe don't want to reveal it or what have you. So there's just different, There's you know, players are trying to think, if I if there's a one out here, what's the next card that I've played? Players also will have the Red Riding Hood card to decide, and they can play that once per game to use it to get the extra movement. Other than that, the game pretty much plays out the same way. It's just that you will find when you're playing a human opponent, it's very different than when playing together cooperatively. Well, I mean, whenever I do one of these, I kind of compare it to the rest of the series. And I think this one is a pretty solid entry. It's probably not as good as Hare and Tortoise, which is my favorite in the series, or the Tortoise and the Hare. Um, but this one has a fun, cooperative, push-your-luck-together element. And you know I'm a fan of push-your-luck, like how far can we go? And that's how this game works. Now, the cooperative game in here is pretty straightforward, and it's okay. The one-versus-all game, I think, is much better. However, having played this with kids, which I think, I mean, it works well with kids, but having played this game with kids, I think that it's really, you've got to really take into account, there goes the Thunderbirds, no, the Blue Angels, sorry. Anyhow, you have to really take into account that for a kid, playing the wolf is a tricky proposition. Playing the wolf can be pretty tough because they have to sit there and they're like, uh, and they're trying to out-bluff everybody else. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the wolf has to make some pretty tough decisions while everyone else is working together as a group and are going, oh, what card do you think the wolf played? And so there's a lot of pressure on that wolf player. Now, everyone else, too, because when you're playing cooperatively, you're like, oh, what card might be next in the pile? I don't know. When you're playing against the wolf, you're like, what card did he do? And everyone has those special abilities. And everyone's like, oh, I, I don't want to use it because I'll give the wolf a special ability. But if you don't do that, then the game kind of just stagnates and I think I think it's slightly tilted in the wolf's favor I'm not sure I've seen both sides win um, but I, I I like the combination between the fact that there's a straight cooperative game but then there's the wolf and I love that if you use a special power give it to the other player then if they use a special power it comes back to you that's a good combo this is probably the most in-depth of the five games so far I, I think that, like, I couldn't give this to my kids and say, play this on your own. I, well, maybe I could, but it would be tough, especially for the younger ones, possibly. But together, as a family-style game, this one works really well. Um, so the cooperative game, eh, it's okay. But the one verse all a lot of fun. Even for adults, that would be Little Red Riding Hood. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.